Hello YouTube and welcome to another video. Uh, in this video I'm, I'm going to be showing you how to make your own uh, inexpensive Ubuntu home backup server for your own purposes. Uh, in short, what's this, what this is going to be is it's going to be a computer that sits on your network 24-7 that you can back up all your home files to. Um, so I'm going to get right down to it. Uh, the first things you need are firstly you need a machine to actually set up. Um, you're going to need a copy of Ubuntu which is free and easy to get and you're going to need a copy of the software called Crash Plan which is also free. And of course I'll show you how to do all the installation uh, and give you some tips and pointers for how to do all that. Uh, so firstly what you need to do is you need to choose a machine to actually install Ubuntu onto. Um, if you're like me you have a whole bunch of desktops lying around that you can use but chances are you're not like me in that regard. Um, so if you have any free machines lying around, if you have to buy one, I'd recommend using a machine that's about um, about 10 years old, no older than that. I recommend it to have at least a dual core processor and a couple gigabytes of memory. Because um, anything older than that wouldn't, wouldn't be very fast. It doesn't need to be fast at all actually, but anything older than that would just be rather slow. Anything newer than that would be overkill. If you have a spare machine lying around, something like this one right here with a dual core CPU and a couple gigs of memory would be great. Um, if you don't have a machine lying around, I wouldn't recommend spending any more than $100 on one. Uh, picking up an old $100 machine with, a, again, a dual-core CPU, a couple gigs of memory would be plenty powerful enough for these purposes. Um, but when you do get a machine, make sure that, that you have a big enough hard drive. Firstly, I recommend getting a computer that supports the SATA drive interface, which is this one right here. All computers in the past 10 years essentially use this drive interface um, versus old, the older IDE. Uh, if the computer you're using isn't too old, I wouldn't even worry about this. But just make sure that your hard drive is big enough. For demonstration purposes, I only have a 250 gig hard drive in this machine. But if you have a whole bunch of stuff that you want to back up from a whole bunch of different machines, I'd recommend buying one that's at least a few terabytes um, new online. So once you've got your machine chosen out, the uh, next thing you have to do is install Ubuntu on it. Um, I'm going to show you how to do that right now. You need to go on your other machine. It's good. Go to Ubuntu.com and you go ahead and you go to download. And there's different versions of Ubuntu. It's also different versions of Linux in general. Um, you can use Ubuntu or Xubuntu or Xubuntu, it's pronounced, I believe, uh, Lubuntu or whatever else. Uh, for simplicity's sake, I'm going to be using Ubuntu Desktop for this video. Um, other versions of Ubuntu specifically include server and desktop. Actually, excuse me, just the other version server. Um, and this is going to be a server, but we're not going to use Ubuntu Server because Ubuntu Server doesn't have a graphic user interface. It's all command line, which is for more advanced users. So we're just going to go ahead and go with a desktop. Once you go there, you have to choose 64 or 32 bit. Hopefully, you can figure out which, um, which version your computer is running. If it's not very old, chances are it's a 64 bit machine. If it's more than 10 years old, which I wouldn't, again, I wouldn't recommend it's probably a 32-bit. If you can't figure that out, just go ahead and look it up online. Um, note that 32-bit operating systems can run on 32 or 64-bit machines, whereas 64-bit operating systems, which are generally better, can only run on 64-bit machines. So I'm going to go ahead and download the 64-bit version right here, and you don't have to donate. Um, it's completely up to you. I'm not going to do that right now. And it goes ahead and it starts a download of a file, um, which is a .iso file. So I just go ahead and you save that. Um, I, I already have it downloaded to save time. It's in my downloads folder right here. Um, and the next thing you need to do is either put it on a USB or a DVD drive. Those are really the two uh, best ways to do this. So um, I'm going to personally put it on a USB. I'll show you how to put it on a DVD as well. Uh, it's pretty easy. I'd recommend getting a program called CD Burner XP for putting it on a, um, a DVD. Um, and you go ahead and you go down to burn ISO image. Make sure you select that versus data disk or else it won't work. Um, and you go ahead and you select your ISO image from your downloads folder that you just downloaded. Your target device, I don't have a DVD drive installed in this computer or this laptop right now, so uh, that's blanked out. Um, and you pretty much just hit burn and it makes you a installation DVD for Ubuntu. Now, if you're going to be putting on a USB like me, there's a really useful tool called Universal USB Installer, which I have right here. I'll, should, I should also put a link to that in the, in the description as well. Um, it's very useful for making 
installation files for pretty much every version of Linux in creation, as well as um, Windows 7 and 8, uh, which is very useful. But I'm just going to go ahead and select Ubuntu. And what you can actually do is you can actually um, check off a download link. Um, and I think that will actually download it for you instead of having to navigate to it, but it really doesn't take much to navigate to. You go ahead and browse for your ISO file, which is in your downloads folder by default. You select your USB drive, of which I have one plugged in, and uh, you just click Create. Now, I, I, I already created it, so it's all set for me, so I don't have to actually do that, but um, there you go. So, at the conclusion of those steps, you either have a USB drive or a DV drive with Ubuntu installation on it. So, once you have that, you go ahead and you pull your drive out, and you go to your machine, and obviously, before you do this, make sure there's something on this machine that you want. Make sure it's all blanked up and everything. Um, because if you have an installation of Windows or whatever, you might end up accidentally overwriting that and losing all your stuff. I, I really think that should go without saying, because uh, this, this is going to be a machine dedicated to the purpose of being a server, so if you're using your desktop for it, I wouldn't recommend doing that. Um, we just go ahead and you plug in your USB drive, or put in your DV drive, for which you have to turn the computer on, of course. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Except then you actually need to turn the power on since I was making some hardware changes. Sorry about that. So you go ahead and you turn your computer on. Now, you should get a little BIOS splash screen, so it's called, with a whole bunch of different options. And by a whole bunch, I mean two. Uh, BIOS settings and boot menu. You want to hit whatever button it says to go into the boot menu, which in my case is F10. Um, it varies by different manufacturers, um, but for me it's F10. And my computer is actually failing right now since it has a bad memory chip, so I'm going to go ahead and fix that for you guys right now. Sorry about that, just had to fix a little issue. So yeah, uh, you just go ahead and go into your boot menu, hitting whatever button necessary. And once you're there, you're either going to boot from your DVD or your USB. Um, I don't have a DVD in, and actually my DVD drive in this desktop isn't plugged in right now, so it doesn't give me that option. But if you're using DVD, obviously select that option if it's if it's uh, if it's here. Um, but instead, I'm using a USB, so I go down, I go to my USB device, and I'm going to go ahead and boot from that. And the Ubuntu uh, desktop setup initiates. Now, this process is pretty self-explanatory. Um, there's really not that much to say about it, but I might just mention a few things here and there. Um, in the next little bit of the video for those of you who could use a little bit of help. The first option you have is to try or install Ubuntu. If you, if you just select try, what it does is it runs a temporary installation off your boot media, um, which doesn't actually get saved when you uh, shut off your computer, which obviously isn't what you want to do. So you just go ahead and you go to install Ubuntu. Okay, you can just pretty much hit continue um, for this. Now you get you get some choices here, like uh, erase disk and install Ubuntu. Um, this will destroy all the data on your disk. So, like I said earlier, just make sure you don't have anything on your disk before you do this, please. You can also encrypt the installation for security. Uh, I wouldn't recommend doing that unless you know what you're doing. Uh, use LVM, logical volume management. That isn't really needed. Like if if you're just doing the basic stuff, just you can just pretty much hit install now and just next throughout this entire installation. Okay, so once installation is complete, this is what you'll see. Um, now it might not hurt to familiarize yourself a little bit with Ubuntu before you go on to the, ne the next steps. Uh, there's a whole bunch of guides online, but you don't really have to do that too much. Um, if you're technologically inclined, I would recommend learning a little bit about the basics of this. Um, but if not, no biggie. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and install that program called Crash Plan. Now usually what you do for uh, installing programs is you go to something called the terminal. Let's go search for terminal here. This computer is kind of slow because I only have one gigabyte of memory in it. Because uh, I, ha I had to take the other few gigs out because uh, they were corrupted and didn't feel like uh, dealing with that right now. But anyways. Um, you'll get this window right here, and usually what you do is go ahead and you'll say sudo, which gives you admin privileges, apt-get install, and whatever piece of software you're getting. But we're not going to do that because we don't have to do that. Um, 
Although again, usually that's how you do it. What we're going to do is we're going to go into Firefox, which is um, by default installed, much better than Internet Explorer. That kind of goes without saying. We're just going to go ahead and Google Crash Plan. Let's go ahead and click the download link on Crash Plan's site. Their site's code42.com. And just click download. Um, now, after you've downloaded, you want to go to your downloads folder, uh, which is right here. Hold on. So after you've downloaded that, you go to your files and you go to downloads. Uh, downloads. And you go ahead and right-click on the file you just downloaded and go to extract here. There's a guide on how to actually do all of this online. I'll post a link to that in the description in case I'm not descriptive enough. But hopefully this will be um, this will be sufficient enough for you to have an understanding of how to do this. Um, so the next thing you got to do is you have to go ahead and install the program via the terminal because you have the installation files right here. You can ignore this since you extracted this. This is just a zip file. Um, but you need to install this. And with Windows, usually you just click an installation uh, setup file. But in this case, what we need to do is we need to go to our terminal. OK. And we need to go to the directory of downloads. Now, um, if you're not familiar with this, just follow exactly what I do. Type in CD and then downloads. Okay, now you're in your downloads folder. Now you have to type in CD, excuse me, I accidentally typed in CS, CD crash, I think that's capital, yes, plan, dash, install. That brings you inside the installation folder that you just made. If you type in LS, it shows all the files, so those are all the files that exist under the crash plan install um, folder, which is also viewable by doing that. Just Essentially, what's happening right here is that um, this is telling me what this tells me here. Just it's in a command line interface. Um, and once you do that, you type in sudo, which gives you admin privileges for what you're about to do because you need that. Dot slash. It's a forward slash. Install. Dot sh. Okay, that's going to ask you for your password. I'm going to go ahead and type mine in. Okay, you pretty much just hit enter, um, enter to read the, um, the EULA. Of course, I've already read this word for word, of course, so I'm just going to go ahead and hold enter and go through the entire thing. Okay, now you have to type in Yes, I'm going to ask you if you agree. And um, ask you a whole bunch of other stuff about where you want to install it and whatnot. Um, if you see something in brackets after a question, that means that's default. You can just go ahead and hit enter, um, and it does the default. Um, do you want to create this folder? Yes or no? See how in brackets it says yes, which means that I don't have to actually type in yes. I can just hit enter, and it has that selected automatically. Let's go ahead and hit enter for each of these. You can just go ahead and... Um, do all the default stuff. Okay. Now it's downloading Java because it doesn't have Java installed yet, which you need. Um, it's kind of nice that the installer does that for you. It makes things pretty easy. And that's actually it. Once this completes, the installation should be complete. Um, I have to hit enter one or two more times, but uh, but yeah. Enter to complete installation. Would you like to start Crash Plan Desktop? Yes. Installation is complete. Now I can just go ahead and click out of the terminal, and Crash Plan starts. And if you ever want to start Crash Plan, it's just the icon on the desktop. And it has a graphic user interface, um, which is pretty easy again for beginners, um, such as the people who might be watching this video. If you're really, really into Linux already, you really already know this stuff. Um, you probably don't need to watch this video. So you're going to want to, go, want to go ahead and make yourself an account. I already have an account, um, but I'm not going to go ahead. Actually, I am going to go ahead and log in to that right now.
Okay, so now Crash Plan's all installed and have an account. Um, as you can see, I've got a whole bunch of computers that are already on my account. And you can theoretically back up to devices over the internet. Because uh, this program not only backs up to computers on your local area network, which is the most efficient way to do it, but also over the internet. Um, there's a whole bunch of settings in here, like uh, destinations and uh, whatnot. I do find this program to be a little bit weird to uh, to navigate, but once you get used to it, it's not too bad. Um, I have a list of all my computers here, including this one right here. Um, that I'm going to use for backups. So your server is all set up. Uh, the only thing you have to do next is to go ahead and configure Crash Plant on all your other machines. Um, another cool trick is that you can use a program like TeamViewer or LogMeIn or whatever other computer to remotely um, control your computer over the internet instead of having to actually be physically at your server. So theor theoretically what you could do is you can just plug in your power and ethernet cable into your server and just use it remotely through another machine instead of having to actually go to your server physically. Um, so there's that. Now, the very last thing you gotta do is you have to go to your other machine, and whatever other machines you want to back up to your backup saver, you have to have Crash Plan on them. Um, I don't have Crash Plan on this machine, but pretty much, if you're running Windows or whatever, any other machine, you just go ahead and you Google Crash Plan, you download it, you install it, which is a bit easier to do on Windows than on Linux, and, um, sign into your account, and it'll show, it'll basically be the exact same screen as this, just when you go to uh, destinations, I believe. No, actually, excuse me. When you go to backup, you uh, select whatever machine you want. And you actually select your server that you just set up, and you go to start backup, and it'll start backing up to your machine. Um, and the free version of this lets you back up once every 24 hours. Um, I think when you have originally sign up, they give you like a 30-day trial that lets you back up. Well, that lets you back up. Um, however so often you want, or not often, but um, once that free trial is up, all you can do is you can select what files you want to back up um, on whatever host machines, like I do all this in this machine, not this one, um, and you can back it up every 24 hours. So hopefully that's pretty, um, that's, hopefully that's a pretty good guide for you guys as to how to do this. If you have any questions, feel absolutely free to post a question in the comments, um, or PM me even. Um, I, I do hope I didn't miss anything. I hope this is a pretty, is a pretty uh, complete, um, easy to understand um, video on how to do this. I do understand that this video is pretty long. I think it's going to be about 20 minutes at this point, but hopefully that wasn't too bad for you guys to understand. I do hope that some of you found this to be rather helpful. So, as always, thank you all for watching. I hope to see you in my next videos.